As Saints GM Mickey Loomis lost all credibility, time to move on in New Orleans. This is Matt Biscana after further review. So Mickey Loomis is a polarizing figure amongst Saints fans. Some love him. Some think he's a good GM. Some applaud him for uh, what he did with Sean Payton and Drew Brees and the 15 years of success for the Saints. Some hate him. For some reason, some people blame everything on Loomis or Gil Benson. They want wholesale changes. We see this every offseason where I hear people say, I want to fire the OCDC head coach owner and have our GM and have the owner sell the team. And uh, it seems like a lot to do in one offseason. So I'm interested to hear what Matt has to say about Mickey. We will discuss all things Saints GM in this video. Mickey Loomis joined the fun over at the NFL uh, meetings on Tuesday, met with reporters. Naturally, one of the things they asked him about was, was moving on from Michael Thomas. Here's what he said. You guys also... Uh, Don from Michael Thomas or back into an end. Yeah, you know, we'll see where that ends up. Uh, could you expand on what you meant by we'll see where that ends up with Thomas? Yeah. Is that no. So this so this video was from Friday, I believe. I'm filming this on a Monday. April Fool's Day, but no fools here. I'm uh, not a big prank guy. If you're I mean, I still don't understand the impractical jokester prank kind of world. Not for me, right? The videos of people in drive throughs ordering an ice cream and grabbing it from the top. I think it's despicable. I think it should be a felony. Uh, those poor people are working. They are, you know, they're just doing their job, and now now they are the butt of a joke. Uh, so I hate pranks. I'm not a prank guy. I just hate pranks. So you will get no pranks here from the boys. But this was Friday, this video. So when they're, when he's asking Loomis this question, this is how I think it all just happened. The reporter says, you know, moved on from Michael Thomas, whatever. And I think Loomis is saying, yeah, we'll see how that ends up or whatever. And the reporter stops in his track like what do you what did you what did you mean by that i think mickey meant we'll see how that plays out like him in free agency we'll see where he ends up we'll see what team he signs with we see we'll see how it goes next year whatever i think it was just kind of a flippant you know maybe kind of a whatever remark that that's how i think mickey said it and the reporter is kind of framing it like is there more to this and now Mickey's back into a corner where he's like, rats, I can't say anything. I can't, you know, there, there isn't anything more to this. It's just kind of a throwaway statement. So Mickey's going to shell up, I think, is what's going to happen here. Oh. <laughs> what he said was what I said. Oh, I guess it's like, is that door still open for you guys? Or yeah, is that... again, I, I've already said, I've already commented on that, so I don't want any more comments on it. What is that? The idea that... If the door still being open for you guys, if that's the reporter hinting at the fact that or the question that Michael Thomas could make a return to the Saints, that's I don't. I mean, I, I don't think that's possible at all. I think that's that's bananas and pajamas. I don't. I don't. I never for a second have thought that Thomas would get released to then be signed by the Saints. I don't think that's an an option here. I think what Loomis was saying, like I said. They're basically saying like, yeah, we, you know, so y'all release Michael Thomas. And Loomis is like, yeah, you know, we'll see where he ends up. Was pretty much how he's saying it. And and that there's, there's not much, I don't think there's much to that quote. I mean, what? We'll see where the, hey, at least he made progress and it wasn't smacking on gum this time. Did I hear him right? He's asked about Michael Thomas and he says, we'll see where that ends up. Yeah. Yes. Back into an end. Yeah. You know, we'll see where that ends up. Yeah. See where he ends up. Are and was very clearly asked, is the door open for him returning? And he wouldn't answer. Yeah, I think yeah, again, I mean I think he knew at that point the question got away from him, the whole conversation got away from him. So what do you do in that situation when you have a reporter in your face, you got a microphone, you know everything you say is going to be you know, recorded or written down. It's a very volatile situation with Michael Thomas. You know it has been. I mean, it certainly has been, especially on Twitter. So, yeah, you shell up and say, I said what I said. It is what it is. No further comment. I, I get it. Mickey Loomis has made made it his uh, his his professional practice when cameras are, and microphones are in front of his face to not say anything. But sometimes... There is a very clear line, like this delineation point, where you say, okay, we've moved on from Michael Thomas. And it's okay to say that. Like, you can say, Michael Thomas was a great player for us. He'll be in the Saints Hall of Fame one day. 
We had to make a decision collectively, and we know Mike's going to do great wherever he goes from here. You can you can say that. Instead, what Mickey Loomis said was this. Back to doing that. Yeah, you know, we'll see where that ends up. I mean, I don't. Have, I mean, I don't have a problem with saying that. I don't have a problem with saying like, uh, yeah. I mean, if I was if I was Mickey Loomis, well, first of all, if I was Mickey Loomis, the Saints would probably have multiple Super Bowls in the last decade. But if I was Mickey Loomis and someone asked me like, hey, so y'all moved on from Michael Thomas, I I don't think it would be crazy to say, yeah, we'll see we'll see where he ends up, we'll see how it goes. I mean, you don't have to. You don't have to say. I don't think you have to be like. Yeah, you know, he's, hey, he'll be in the Hall, Saints Hall of Fame one day. We love him. You know, he did this, this, and this. And, you know, our time is over. And now we wish him the best in his future endeavors. And we are happy that he is testing for it. I don't, you don't have to go on some weird monologue. You can just say, yeah, I mean, he's gone. We'll, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out. It is what it is. We'll see how it plays out. <laughs> that, that's a that's pretty normal answer, I think, is, is we'll see how it plays out. And we will see how it plays out. Michael Thomas isn't on a team right now. Uh, we'll see where he signs. We'll see how that, how that works. Will he go to a, you know, will he go to a contender? Will he see some serious playing time next year? Will he be signed by a team? I don't know. But I, I don't put any, I don't, I don't really put any stock into uh, this quote from Loomis. Is he is he saying the door is open for Michael Thomas? Or like the same no, Michael Loomis Thomas is not. Loomis is that not, no. teed off on Derek Carr during a game on Twitter? The same Michael Thomas. Uh, Loomis is definitely not saying that there is. He's absolutely not saying that there is a chance that Michael Thomas returns to the Saints. Absolutely, he's not hinting at that. I think he's hinting at just like it, he, I think he's almost hinting, or he almost did a good old fashioned Freudian slip, if you will, of like basically saying like, "Yeah, f him." Like if he wants to leave, we'll see. We we'll see how good he does somewhere else. That's pretty much that's how I took it. I took it as him saying like, if he wants to leave so bad, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it works for him. We'll see how good he is. You know that that's kind of how the tone it sounded like. And like I said, I think Mickey realized like, ooh, that I, I I could get a little ahead of my skis here if I'm not careful. And that's when he kind of reeled it back and was just like, I said what I said, and that's all I'm giving you. You know. That's how I took it. I certainly didn't hear any. In that quote from Mickey, I heard no. Like, yeah, maybe maybe he'll be a saint. Yeah, maybe we'll bring him back. Yeah, maybe we'll re-sign him. I didn't hear any of that. Thomas, that wrecked Dennis Allen in the front office that basically said, hey, when Sean Payton was here, I wasn't a problem. Now this guy, the same, Den the same Michael Thomas that goes – Goes on a, a Twitter rant against Jeff Duncan, the guy that's always the guy that ghosted your organization when he was injured. Like that guy, you can't slam the door on that guy. No, the door is slammed. I'm stunned by this, man. Like I am not. The thing that all. continues to floor me about Mickey Loomis is that there is just zero accountability, and that's the problem. With this or that is, if I'm looking for one overarching theme, okay, what, where is all of this distress rooted? It's in the fact that there is no accountability, because Tom Benson is is passed, Gail Benson inherited the team, and I've told you before, she does what any fan should want a team owner to do. Yeah, she lets her front office and lets the people in those positions make the decisions. I mean. Yeah, I've said that before. Like, you look at the good franchises, the you know the the Ravens. You look at some of these teams that have been good the last couple of years. The the Niners. You don't even know their owners. Their owners aren't getting involved. You know the owners of bad franchises because the owners can't stop micromanaging the franchise. The last thing you want is an owner who thinks he's a GM. C C I dot E subtweet at Jerry Jones. Is that what you want? You want a Jerry Jones who thinks he's the GM? So, that you, newsflash, the Saints have been better than, than the Cowboys in every metric possible since 2000. But that's the truth. Since the year 2000, so almost 25 years straight, 
The Saints have been better in every single metric. Conference championships, playoff wins, Super Bowls, wins, all anything. Better than the Cowboys. So, be careful what you wish for. Because all the people saying, Gail Benson needs to step down, and we need a new owner, and we need this, and we need, we need that. I would much rather have an ownership group like the Ravens or the 49ers who just own the team, step back, and allow the people who they put in the general manager and president of football operations and head coach and all that, the scouting department, the player eval department, they let them make those decisions. So any ownership conversation I think is crazy. She's willing to spend money. She hires people and she stays out of the way. That's what you want. Yeah. Hire your yeah. people. Trust them to do their job. Give them the resources they need. Get out of the way. But yeah. when they are failing, you need to get rid of them. The problem is Mickey Loomis is in the will. Like, he's the kid that knows he's the heir to the throne. Okay, so let's, let's, I mean, this is, this is crazy, but let, let's, let's think about the Mickey Loomis. Like, Matt is saying that he wants, he's basically saying Loomis should be fired. Now, really think about this. Think about the last 10 years or whatever of the Saints. So like I said, since 2000, the Saints have been one of the five or six most successful franchises in the NFL. Definitely top 10, probably closer to top seven, top eight. I've done this before where we go back and we look at the wins and all that stuff for the last 10 years, five years, 15 years, 20 years, all that. And the Saints are consistently top eight in the NFL, consistently top 10. Okay, so let's look at that for just Loomis. Let's look at the Super Bowl. Let's look at bringing Breeze in. Let's look at bringing Sean Payton in. Let's look at bringing a lot of the other players that we know and love, the draft classes, all of that. Now, you could say some of that should be attributed to Sean Payton. Some of that should be attributed to Drew Brees. Okay, there probably is some credence to that, but we can't take it all away from Loomis. You can't say it was all Sean Payton. None of it was Loomis, right? I'm just Let's just say Loomis had a hand in some of the success. So then Payton leaves. Breeze retires. We go through, you know, the quarterback roundtable, all that stuff. We get Derek Carr last year. We win nine games last year. You know, it was disappointing, yes, but we weren't we weren't a three win team. We weren't a four win team. And now all of a sudden, you're talking about just flat out firing them, just flat out firing Loomis. I I'm not saying Loomis is a Hall of Fame GM. He's the greatest GM that ever existed. But I certainly think for a team like the Saints where you have a new head coach in here with Dennis Allen, here you have question marks about, you did not have a quarterback at all after Breeze, and now you have Derek Carr. You're one year into Carr. You do go not you, you do win nine games. Like, you do win nine games in a couple of those games. You're a coin flip away from winning 10, 11 games. I think it's nuts. I really do. I think it's crazy if after last year, we're flat out just like, you know what? We're firing everybody we're firing because if you fire if you fire loomis you got to fire allen right you can't you can't fire your gm but keep your head coach who is not having success so imagine saying after that season you fire the oc the dc the head coach the gm that is nuts now if this year we struggle you fire Allen for sure. And then Loomis is on the hot seat. But the priority list is so screwed up of how this should go. We should have the first person we should have looked at was Pete Carmichael for sure. Okay, he's gone. The offensive staff, gone. A lot of the defensive staff, gone. We've replaced a lot of the staff. So, trivia question raise your hand if you know the answer. Who is next on the chopping block if we struggle this season? Dennis Allen, right, the head coach. Dennis Allen has been a problem. Yep. So the priority list, the, the uh, coordinators take the fall first. Then we get to the head coach. If Allen, if we struggle this year, Allen will be gone. You allow the GM then to bring in the new head coach. But since it's a new head coach and you would assume new coordinators, the priority list shifts. So if we fire Allen, bring in a new head coach, the chopping block now goes up to Loomis. So that if we struggle again, you got to now look at Loomis and you got to look at, okay, what's the problem? You know, where, where are we missing here? Do we look at replacing the GM? Does he resign? Or, you know, how, how does that go? But I just don't think it's, 
I don't think it makes any sense to have fired him after this past season. The entire family fortune is coming his way. And he's got no accountability. That's Mickey Loomis right now. So he's not accountable to anyone or anything. So he keeps saying stupid stuff like that. Are you moving on from Michael Thomas? I don't know. Yeah, we'll see where that ends up. Yeah, we'll see where that ends up. I remember... Am I off base with this? Am, am I... Am I... Maybe I'm not hearing... Maybe I'm I'm missing something. Do y'all think what he said was that crazy? Do y'all think what he said, he should have said something differently, or he, like, that's a crazy answer, or he should have... Do y'all think that quote warranted, like, this reaction video? Do y'all think this answer from Loomis to this reporter warranted three question marks, two exclamation points, and a all credibility in all caps? Like, do y'all think that that answer right there was enough to be like, it's time to move on to New Orleans? I mean, I just don't, I don't, I don't think it's, if I would have heard this interview, I would not have even paused the video at, we'll see where that ends up. I just don't think that shows a lack of accountability. I really don't. And I mean, I don't think Loomis, I don't have a problem with Loomis being kind of a prickly pear. He is a prickly pear. Sean Payton was a prickly pear. We watched the full end, what was that, like a two and a half hour reaction video. We cut it up into two parts. The Mickey Loomis end of the year press conference, he was chewing the gum. He, he is a, con- I mean, look, he's been the king of the saints for however many decades. He he does have the golden parachute. He is not being fired. He is in he his last name might as well be Benson. It is what it is. So if he has this air of arrogance or this like cocky attitude or just a bad attitude in general, or if he if he's not a guy who likes the media, whatever, I don't care. Bill Belichick is not a friendly fella. He is not a guy who gives great sound bites. How many times have we seen Bill Belichick? give a horrible soundbite to a reporter. You know, just completely dismiss a reporter all the time. But is that a lack of accountability or is Bill Belichick just kind of a jerk? He's kind of just a jerk. You know, we see the same thing with Greg Popovich in the NBA. Popovich, he will dress down reporters. Is that a lack of accountability or is that just his personality? It's just his personality. You know, this, this I, t- I say it all the time, ladies and gentlemen, winning is the greatest band-aid in history if we would have won 12 games last year do you think this video is getting made if we would have won 12 games last year do you think mickey loomis has would lose all of his credibility question mark question mark question mark exclamation point exclamation point hit the all caps button i don't think so so i i just think i'm not going to say these are these are reaches but i don't think this is that big of a deal we're watching this you remember that show coach it's an old show. Yeah, when I was a kid, when I man, I mean, I, this is an old show. But when I was a kid, uh, my dad used to watch Coach, and I can see it. I can see the episode. I can see the characters. I can see everybody on the show very well. The lead actor looked a lot like Terry Bradshaw, I believe. I think he might have been like the quarterback, but he. I, I remember he looked very similar to Terry Bradshaw. With uh, what was the actor's name? It was Hayden Hayden Fox was his name was the coach. Yeah. You know, Craig I, uh, I know what show you're talking about. Craig T. Nelson. Yes. I know. Thank you. Thank you for validating my uh you're welcome. my factual answer. I remember in that show it is an old reference. All right, a lot of y'all ain't I was just about to say this. I mean, look, I'm all for a good old fashioned metaphor. I'm all for a good old fashioned rabbit hole, but coach has to be I mean, we're talking like forty five years old. Because I'm, I would have been, you know, you're talking about, I'm guessing, I'm guessing Coach would have been a sh- like a, like a, a show, early 90s, early 90s to late 80s, maybe even before that, I don't know how long the run of it was, so this is a, you're, you're, you're uh, I'm not sure Matt's demo, but he better hope the demo's 
pretty pretty up there if, if coach is the reference. I think you'll remember this. That's fine. And this is a random reference. Guy coached a fictional place. It was Minnesota State uh, where he coached. He was a college coach. He was a great coach, and he got hired by the pros. He goes to coach the Orlando team in the pros. And uh, and the owner was uh, – it was a similar situation. It was a woman who inherited the team uh, from her husband. Um, and it was Mona from Who's the Boss. Why do I remember this? <laughs> I don't know. Some of y'all are going, I remember that! And like half of you who are like under the age of 40 are going, man, you are old. I get it. Anyway, they have, they have the draft, the NFL draft. And the owner, this lady, trades their first or the number one overall pick. It was, I think it was Jerry Jones actually was in the show. She trades the number one overall pick like for some horses and farmland. Like without him knowing that she did it. Um, that's what this feels like. like. Does it? Is that what this feels like? Is Mickey Loomis saying... Yeah, we'll see how that we'll see about that. Him saying that is that the equivalent to trading away the first overall pick in the NFL draft for some horses and farmland? I'm just kind of I'm just not really seeing this. I'm just not really seeing the issue here. I mean, we could talk about Mickey Loomis's drafts. We could talk about some of his hires. We could talk about the Dennis Allen situation, but I mean. I, I just don't, I don't want to like belabor the point, but if you like, what's the worst thing Mickey Loomis has done as a GM? Like if, if you're talking about firing Mickey Loomis, like Matt is, what, what are you telling him? Like, what is the reason you're firing him? Because if you're firing him for Dennis Allen, which I would think is probably going to be a lot of y'all's answers. We've already kind of come to grips with it made sense to let Dennis Allen try and do this. If you think about the situation, Sean Payton leaves. Okay, Dennis Allen's the DC, a very heralded DC. At that point, you're you're trying to keep things in house. You're trying to keep some of that Sean Payton magic or whatever. You're trying to keep the culture. So if you've got this DC who you're like, well, I don't want to lose him. Like I don't want to lose arguably the best DC in the NFL, arguably a top five DC. Let's just try and make him the the head coach and see if Pete Carmichael can figure the offense out. And if we can keep the same offense and the same defense, we'll be fine. That's the, that was the logic. Then Dennis Allen's the head coach. Doesn't work out. Okay. Immediately, immediately, Mickey Loomis and them have said, all right, this ain't working. We've, we've given this two years. See ya. Now they're trimming all these all the coaches, and they're getting new staff in there. They're getting new ideas in there. They're doing all this stuff. Like, so it was like a it, he took a chance, and two years later, we're seeing this huge shift. And I guarantee you, if the Saints do not succeed this year or struggle or whatever, Dennis Allen will be gone. Everyone else is gone. Every other coordinator is gone. There's no one else now. This is the natural progression. So if the Dennis Allen thing is the reason you're firing Mickey Loomis, I think Mickey Loomis has taken accountability for that. I think he has taken accountability and said, yeah, that wasn't the move. They keep everything on the inside, keep everything you know, in-house, try and keep the same culture, keep the same whatever, can't, same ideas. He, he has admitted, yep, that was a mistake. We're going to find new ideas. How do I know that? Because all these coaches that he's hiring are from outside the organization. He could have easily said, Ronald Curry's a new OC. He didn't. He got rid of all these guys, every one of them. And now we have all these new ideas, young ideas, totally different tree. That's him taking accountability and saying, yeah, that was, that was a mistake. We tried something. We, we, I mean, again, guys, you're talking about, you're talking about like, you know, losing Sean Payton and Drew Brees. That is a monumental shift. You're losing the greatest coach in the history of your franchise and the greatest quarterback in the history of your franchise, you're losing both of them within about 10 months, and you've had them both in the building for 15 years. So you're not going to always make that transition perfectly. They took a chance on the transition part where they thought, well, let's just keep it in-house here. That, that didn't work. Okay, now they're trying something else. We're not 10 years down the road. This is, it's not like we've been, and that's something else too. Like I understand the schedule was easy last year, but we won nine games. The Atlanta Falcons won seven games. Where's the uproar? Why? I mean, why aren't the Falcons firing 
why is no one saying Arthur Blank should sell the team? Why is no one saying that they should be firing GMs and firing everybody in the building? They won seven games with an easier schedule than the Saints. So, you know, this idea that the Saints have been a complete dumpster fire, we won nine games. And there was quite a few games that, just two games. Like if you just take away two games that came down to the wire, or the Packers game, or whatever. If you just take away a couple of games, we're, we're 10 win, 11 win division champions. So, I just think you got to give the organization a little more grace to than two years. You know, a little bit more grace after Breeze and Peyton. I, I think we can all agree the Dennis Allen, Pete Carmichael trust, that whole decision was a mistake. And when I say we all agree, I include Mickey Loomis in there because Mickey Loomis agrees too. So now we're getting, like I've explained, this priority list where now we're getting close to where Mickey is going to be on the hot seat to answer some of these questions. But that's if Kubiak fails. That's if Dennis Allen gets fired and we hire a new head coach and then that head coach fails. Then it's going to be more than likely what will happen. And we, we just saw this in Chicago. But more than likely, how that will play out is Allen will fail this year. They'll fire Allen. And Loomis, what normally would happen is they would fire Allen and Loomis. But Loomis has a little bit more goodwill in this organization. So they fire Allen. Loomis would be on the hot seat. They'd hire a new head coach and then. So I would say we're at least three years of failing away from Loomis possibly being fired. I just think two years is way too fast. Way too fast after a transition. You know, after a transition. And I mean, you, you can't even really count. I mean, I guess you can say it's his fault too, but you can't even really count like the Trevor Simeon, Jameis Winston, Ian Book season you know you try you try and figure things out with Jameis he gets hurt then all of a sudden you're, you got this weird amalgamation of quarterbacks then you then you say well we can't really we can't really determine anything from that season so we bring Jameis back again he gets hurt again so now you're stuck with Dalton how do you evaluate what happened with Dalton then you get Carr like it's just been a constant transition so I don't think it's been long enough at all to really be like yep Loomis is the problem get rid of him like, Mickey Loomis can do whatever he wants. He can go trade. He can go trade. Let's go trade the first round pick for, for like, for some thoroughbreds. What are they doing to my team? What, what are they doing to my favorite team? The inmates are running the asylum. It's a definition of it. This is driving me bonkers. Hey, thanks so much for watching. I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm look. It's funny because I get I have a lot of people. I have a lot of people in the comments who say I'm negative. They say that I'm a negative person in the Saints media. And then when I hear stuff like this, I'm like, man, I'm the most positive person in the damn media. I mean, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, it's like the like what are they doing to my favorite team? Like, there's a lot of teams. There's a lot of franchises in the NFL, in the NFL that would cut their arm off to be in the situation the Saints are in. I mean, are we great? Probably not. Are we the worst team? No. Are we even bad? No. Are we middle of the road slash average? Like, man, like imagine those people, imagine the Saints fans from the you know, late 60s or, or I guess uh, early 70s. Since late 60s would have been the first Saints fans. But like the early 70s where, you know, the, they're, they're wearing paper bags. And now flash forward. That shows you how good the Saints have been. We're flash forward. We're what three years removed from a twelve win season? What was Breeze's last season? Thirteen wins? Somebody, somebody, double check me. We're like, <laughs> we're like three years removed from a thirteen win season where we're hosting Tom Brady in the playoffs, and yeah, we lose to him. Breeze is hurt, whatever. Then we have a couple of, we struggle a little bit again. We lose Peyton, lose Breeze, struggle a minute. Then, then we sign Derek Carr. He gets hurt, but we still somehow get win nine nine games. Like, imagine telling the Aints fans, imagine telling them, like, hey, listen to this. In, in, in a couple of years here, the fan base will be driven, what was the quote, absolutely bonkers, because we won nine games. How do you think uh, the Jim Haslett Saints fans, if we would have said, hey, man, we're going to uh, go to multiple NFC Championship games, we're going to win a Super Bowl, we're going to do all this, 
and then we're going to lose our best player and our best coach. We're going to win nine games, and the and the fan base is going to want Gail Benson to sell to sell the team. They're going to want Gail to sell the team and relocate because we won nine games. <laughs> I don't know, man. I guess it's just that. I guess it's that part of the off season. I guess it's that part of the off season where it's just. I don't want to say fake outrage. I don't want to say that, but I think I think if you're getting upset about this, it might be time to. It might be time to watch some Netflix or go for a walk. Try yoga. There's a lot of hobbies out there, ladies and gentlemen. Try yoga. Try meditation. Read a book. Watch a movie. Watch a TV show. Go work out. Have a beer. You know, if you imbibe, you don't have to imbibe. But there's a lot of... If, if you're listening to Mickey Loomis and, you, and him saying, we'll see how that plays out, drives you to this level of of upset, get your heart rate going. I want to unplug for the day. I want to go go take a walk. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. Happy April Fool's Day. I'll see you in the next video.